Hello everybody, I'm Shadow Duke, and welcome to my 1 to 99 Iron Man Summoning Guide. In this guide I'll be going over some of the useful items, how to get charms, how to train the skill, and how to get most of the items that you need for secondaries. First up we have the useful items. For this you're going to want to get the shaman's outfit that can be won through familiarization minigame. You can also get the modified shaman's headdress by upgrading the one that you currently have with a modification. It'll give you a 5% chance to save any charms that you use while summoning. By doing that minigame and completing it, it also gives you a temporary buff that gives you triple the amount of charms for a limited time. So if you plan on grinding for charms, I would definitely recommend you do that minigame first. Another useful buff you can get is the infinite run energy from the Oglog Spa. In order to use this buff, you do need to complete as a first resort quest. Up next we have Spirit Gems. You can get this from General PVM or Slayer depending on how you train your combat. Even if you don't think that you're going to be using the lower level spirit gems, I'd still recommend picking them up because you can combine them to make better ones. It'll take 3 sapphire to make an emerald, and so on. Up next we have the summoning focus. These are uncommon drops from felines or scarab akins, and each one gives you a 20% experience boost per pouch. It may take a bit long to get these, so it might not be worth your time. I personally never tried it, but I just want to let you know that this item exists. And the last item on this list, but probably the most important, is the Charming Imp. This item does pick up charms for you, so that way you don't have to do it manually as long as you have an empty space in your inventory where the charm can fit. If you also have 500 Slayer points, you can add the Charming Imp to your tool belt so that way it doesn't take up an inventory slot. When training summoning, there's a few different places that you can train it at. I'm going to list them here from worst to best in my opinion. The first thing that you should do is complete the Wolf Whistle quest. This will get you to level 4 summoning as well as 275 gold charms. If used properly, it could get you up to level 16. In order to train summoning, you're going to need pouches, spirit shards, charms, as well as the secondary ingredients. I'll go over later how to get some of the charms. The first place that you're going to end up training summoning is going to be in Tavalry. There's a bank to the southwest, and then the obelisk to the northeast. If you unlock Menafoss, then you're going to want to go there instead to train. In the Merchant District, there's going to be a bank to the south, and then if you go run directly north, you'll see the obelisk there. Once you've completed Plague's End, then you can move on to Priftinus. This is going to be the best place to train because you have an hour where it's called the Almond Hour, and you can get 20% more experience for each patch you create, as well as creating 12 scrolls instead of 10. Now that you know how to train the skill, let's learn how to get some charms. If you want to grind for some gold charms, then you have a couple of options here. You can kill the gelatinous abominations in Taverly, or you can kill the giant rock crabs that can be found in the Wilderness Chaos Tunnels, or on Waterbirth Island. Just be aware, if you are going into the Wilderness Chaos Tunnels, you will have to be in the wilderness for just a little bit as you get the zone that you need to be in. So be prepared to eat or teleport if you need to. If you look at the screen, you're going to see here a couple of familiars that you can craft and what level they require to be crafted at. If you've done the Wolf Whistle quest, you can skip over the Spirit Wolf pouch and go straight to Deadfowl. This graph will show you how many pouches you need to make of each, as well as the shard cost to get to the next tier. If you've noticed, you'll see that the level 52 Spirit Terror Bird pouch cost 56 mil to get to level 99. But it's not really the cost that's the problem, it's the fact that you need to make 188,000 pouches just to reach level 99 with gold charms, so it's definitely not worth doing that in the long run. You're going to want to move to the next tier of charms as soon as possible. I'm going to quickly go over all the secondaries that you need to craft the pouches. In order to craft the spirit wolf pouch, you're going to need some wolf bones. The best place to get this is going to be in the stronghold of security in Barbarian Village. Climb down the hole and take a couple doors south and then east, and then you'll see a couple low-level wolves that you can kill. They respawn relatively quickly, and they have very low HP, so you can do this at a low level. You're only going to need about 1-2 to two inventories of this, and if you've done the quest you won't need to do it at all, but you can bank either in Edgeville to the north, or in Varrock to the east. Next up we have chickens for the Dreadfowl. For this one you're going to want to teleport to Lumbridge and then run north. Over here you're going to see a small farm with a lot of chickens. You can kill all the chickens outside of the gate, and then lock yourself inside the gate and they should all spawn inside, keeping them more compact. Just pick up all the chicken meat, and then run south to bank. Next up you're going to need iron ore for the granite crab. For this one you can go ahead to Lumbridge once again, and then run southwest into the Lumbridge swamp. 
Eventually you're going to see a mini game called the Shattered Worlds. You can look for a red star on your mini map to find it a little bit easier. Just west of Shattered Worlds you're going to see some iron ore. Mine there until you have a full inventory and then run east to the Shattered Worlds mini game to bank. And lastly we're going to need to get some bird meat to make the spirit terror birds. For this one you're going to want to teleport to Oglog and then run into the encampment to the southeast. Just note, in order to access this shop, you're going to need to do the As a First Resort quest. Just trade the ogre standing north of the bank next to that big campfire. You should be able to buy yourself a bird meat pack, as well as a raw beef pack which you should buy in order to make pouches for another familiar later on. It's very difficult to get green charms if you're trying to farm for them specifically, so I'd recommend just doing it through Slayer or any normal combat that you go through on a regular basis. But if you did want to try and get green charms specifically, you can kill cave bugs located in Lumbridge. Just make sure that you bring a light source, otherwise you won't be able to access the cave. Now as far as with training with green charms, at level 33 you're going to want to make beavers. At level 47 you're going to make magpies. 56 you're going to make ibis. And at level 69 you're going to make fruit bats. It starts to get extremely expensive to train as green charms, which is the main reason why people tend not to train with this method. If you remember before, if we wanted to make spirit terror birds all the way up to level 99 from level 52, it only cost 51 mil. But to get from level 69 to 99 with fruit bats, it cost over 300 mil, making green charms a very unreasonable way to train. For me personally, when I reach that level on my Iron Man, I'm definitely not going to be training through fruit bats. In fact, by the time I'm able to use any Crimson Charms, I'm probably going to solely be training with those as well as Blue Charms, and I'm going to be leaving my Green Charms in the bank unless I'm really trying to push for a level and I want to get it quickly. One of the first secondaries that you're going to need for Green Charms is going to be the Willow Logs to make the Beaver Pouches. For this, I'd recommend going to Draenor Village and then chopping the Willow Trees south of the bank. Since the bank is so close, it really shouldn't take that long to get all the logs that you need. Up next, you're going to need some Gold Rings. For this, you're just going to craft it yourself, that's going to be the easiest way to get it, so you're going to need to make sure you have the gold bars in your furnace, and then a ring mold, which should be on your tool belt, and then just craft gold rings like you would normally do. You could technically go to some jewelry shops to buy them, but they only have a limited stock, so they wouldn't sell as many as you need, and a lot of the time they don't even have stock in the first place. To get harpoons for the ibis, you're going to teleport to Catherby using the lodestone teleport. If you go southeast of the bank, you're going to find a fishing shop. That shop has 1,000 harpoons for sale, and the bank isn't so far, so that way you can make some quick trips. If that shop runs out of stock, you could either come back later or go to the shop in Port Sarim to buy more there. And lastly, we're going to need some bananas for the fruit bat pouch. For this one, you're going to want to travel to Karamja through Port Sarim using the ferry boat. Just right click to pay a fare on the people wearing blue, and you should travel to Karamja docks. Run a little bit west into the plantation and then pick some bananas off of the tree. You could either do that to get all the bananas you need, or you can actually craft yourself a fruit bat pouch, turn some of those pouches into scrolls, and then cast a special attack of the fruit bat. The fruit bat will then spawn some bananas on the floor that you can pick up. It's not guaranteed that you'll get a banana, so you might not get enough to maintain the amount of bats you produce. At that point, it's really all just luck. But as I demonstrated before with the cost, it's really not worth doing fruit bats anyways, so it's not like you need that many bananas in the first place. Up next we're going to be talking about the use of Crimson Charms. Crimson Charms are going to be one of the best ways to train summoning. They give a decent amount of experience and they're pretty affordable. Not only that, but they can be farmed pretty efficiently. Certain methods could give you up to 500 Crimson Charms an hour, assuming you're using proper gear and you're at the proper level. A ton of different monsters drop to Crimson Charms like Black Demons and Rock Lobsters, but the best place to get them are going to be through Dagonauts on Waterbirth Island or Water Fiends in the Ancient Caverns. Personally, I like to kill the Dagonauts because they're a lot easier to kill and they give pretty much the same rates as Water Fiends. You're going to want to make sure that you're bringing your best armor available, preferably something AoE, a cannon, as well as aggression potions. If you want to kill them even faster, you could bring a Smoke Devil, along with the Dust Cloud Scroll, which will kill them even faster since it's an AoE special ability. And now that you have the charms, let's talk about what you should create with them. Once you reach level 46, you're going to want to create some Pyre Lords. Then at level 49, you're going to want to create Bloated Leeches. Once you get to level 64, you're going to make some Strange Plants. Then at 74, you're going to make Granite Lobsters. And finally at level 96, you're going to make Pack Yaks. Something you'll notice in this chart is that there's a huge jump between level 74 and 96, costing you about 109 mil in shards alone. 
You'll see later on when we get to the blue charms, it's actually going to be cheaper to train with blue charms than it is with crimsons. Blue charms can be a little bit difficult to get, but I'll show you a good way of getting them later on. To get the tinder boxes, you can go to any general store around RuneScape, but those stores only hold 10 in stock. If you want to get more, you're going to need about 118, so you can go to Ignatius Hot Deals. He's the fire making cape salesman located south of Shears Village, and he has 60,000 in stock. You'll only need to make about 5 trips to get all the tinder boxes you need, so it's definitely worth doing it that way. Next up, we need raw beef. You can go to Oglog, also known as the Spa Resort, after as a first resort, and in the shop that we visited before to get the bird meat, you can also buy the raw beef there. If you don't have access to that city, you can go to Rufus's shop, located in Canfus. You're gonna have to make multiple trips because they're not put inside of a box like they are in Oglog, but he sells about 100 raw beef. Up next for the strange plants, you're gonna want to buy Bagged Plant 1. This is located in Falador Park, you just need to talk to one of the farmers and press the trade option. Over there you're going to see a ton of bags, just look for one that says Bag Plant 1, it's going to be costing 1k. For the Granite Lobster, you're going to need to go to the Granite Mine, located south of the Bednet Camp. While mining for the Granite, you're going to want to try and get the biggest piece of Granite that you can, and just leave it in its big form. Later on, you're going to go to the bank, and then you're going to chip it into smaller pieces, as small as you can get it. Luckily it doesn't matter what size you have, so the bigger ones that you bring home to the bank, the less trips you're going to need to make. You could break a 2kg block into 10 small pieces. So bring it to the bank whole and just break it up there. And lastly for the Crimson Charms, you're going to want to make some pack yaks. For this you're going to need yak hide. The best place to get this is Jatizo Island, right after you've done the Fremnik Isles quest. There's going to be a lady that sells them in the boxes and it'll give you 1000 yak hide that you can use. You can only do this once a day, so if you need a lot, make sure you plan ahead. And lastly, we have the blue charms. These are going to give you the best experience in the game as far as summoning goes, but they are a bit difficult to get. The best way to get these charms are going to be by killing Bork, Tormented Demons, Glacors, Exiled Calphite Guardians, or Exiled Calphite Marauders. For me personally, I've done quite a bit of Elite Dungeons 3 farming where you'd go up to the first boss and then you just reset, and I've gotten a lot of blue charms that way. So if you didn't want to kill either one of those creatures I listed before, that would be another alternative of doing it. It might not be as good, but it'll still get you a ton of blue charms. The only thing that you're going to be making with these charms are going to be the minotaurs. Pretty much just make the highest level minotaur that you can at the time to get the most experience out of it. Personally, I like to wait to use my blue charms until I'm trying to push for a level that I'm looking for, because the higher level you are when you use them, the more experience you'll get out per charm. When you reach level 89, even though you can make Geyser Titans, as you can see here, the price between 89 and 99 is 58 mil, where the price from 86 to 99 is only 31 mil. So if you want to save a little bit of money, then go ahead and do Rune Minotaurs until you reach 99. If you don't care about money as much, then the Geyser Titan is going to be the way to go. Something else to note about doing the Geyser Titan is you do need Water Talismans for it. So not only does it cost more with shards to make, but it's also a harder secondary ingredient to get than a Rune Bar is. So keep that in mind when you're making your decision whether you want to go with the Rune Minotaur or the Geyser Titan. As far as getting the secondaries, you just gotta mine and then smith the bars yourself to get them. If you want to know where to get specific ores, instead of me listing them all here, we already have a mining guide where it'll show you where to get all the ores that you need to create the bars, so I'd recommend that you go there, I'll put a link in the description. As for getting the Water Talismans for the Geyser Titan, you're just gonna to want to go back to the Water Fiends just like you did with the Crimson Charms. With that being said, if you do plan on doing Geyser Titans, then it might be worth farming for Crimson Charms at the Water Fiends, so that way you're getting Waller Talismans at the same way, so you don't have to do two different grinds. And that's going to be all that I have for you today. If you found this guide useful in any way, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe so you can see more videos in the future. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya!